Isaiah chapter 40. In the Old Testament, the book is Isaiah. The chapter is 40. The verse is number 8. You can let them in. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse number 8. Isaiah chapter 40. In the Old Testament, the verse is number 8. You found it, you will discover these words. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. I want to talk about the word of our God. The word of our God. This day, 28 years ago, I received both the burden and the blessing of preaching. <coughs> this day, 1992, second and third Sunday, I was announced to the church at the Holman Street Missionary Baptist Church to be a minister of the gospel. It has been 28 years. I thank God for both the blessing and the burden of preaching because it is a blessing to be able to give the word of God, the almighty God, the word of the God himself to the people that lives will change and be made the better. Therefore, it is a blessing. It is also a, a burden in the fact that whenever you speak for God, Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 8. There you go. Whenever you speak for God, you ought to be concerned if you will cut it straight, get it right, right. and say what God is saying. In our frail bodies, we oftentimes get caught up in ourselves, and we find ourselves getting beyond what God has said uh -huh. and try to interject what we have to say. Yeah. But it's the Word of God that is powerful. Mm -hmm. right. It is the Word of God that is quick. It is the Word of God that cuts mm -hmm. between the the Mara in the bone, yeah, yeah. it is God's word. Yeah. We have to be careful whether we are part of the pew or the pulpit mm -hmm. that when we talk the word, we yeah. must say what the author is really saying. Yeah, yes, right. yeah. We must use our hermeneutics, meaning that we must understand the text just as it was written in order to cut it straight. And then when we stand, we must make sure we stick to the right homiletics. Right. Meaning the invitation must be just what God has said. Right. Yeah. I do understand that people all over the world have their own style, their own bent, they have their own personalities, and God has afforded us to use those as we choose as long as we do not take away from God's word yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or add to God's word. Yeah, yeah. I say to you today, brothers and sisters, that when you quote the word, mm -hmm. be careful that you make sure you quote it the way the author intended for you to say it. I warn you that when you teach the word, when you preach the word, make sure that you say it with the author's in mind. Because the word changed in its meaning every day. When I grew up, uh, crack was something that looked like a line in a sidewalk. When I grew up, coke was something you drink. 
for refreshment. When I when I grew up, right, ice would say a substance that was crystallized water. All right. That you poured your Coca-Cola, your pop, your soda on top of for it to cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. When when I when I grew up, when, when I grew up, with four legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't my homies. It wasn't, it wasn't somebody I hang out with. It was something we call hound or something we call spots. But now ice is a substance that will kill you. Yeah, yeah. Now crack is crystallized cocaine. Now, something in the sidewalk, we have to give it another turn now because crack has taken over. Yeah. We need to understand as the book was written, it was written in a time that they had different words that meant different things than they mean today. Yeah, yeah. When we look at Isaiah chapter 40, author is talking to those who've been exiled. The book is written 150 years before Cyrus the king was said to have going to exile to release them from exile so they can make it back to Jerusalem. Therefore, Isaiah writes this narrative to them, making them promises that it's going to be all right. Let me tell you, every now and then, you need somebody to tell you in your downtime, it's going to be all right. Folk really don't know what you're going through. They really don't, uh, don't cannot identify nor sympathize with what you're going through. But every now and then, you need a friend to stop by. Mm -hmm. To say, I, I don't know what you're going through, but everything is going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Isaiah, the prophet, tells us we need to understand that even in our captivity, even in these great United States of America, in the midst of our captivities, we need to understand that everything yeah. is going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. So Isaiah says to, to this entire nation, just stay with the Lord. Just keep crying out unto him. Mm -hmm. Begins in verse 1 by saying, comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Every now and then, you need comfort. You need somebody that will comfort you. And I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that the Holy Spirit is our comfort. Sure. Yeah, yeah. He keeps us when we cannot keep ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah goes on to make promises that are very familiar to us of the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He's talking about John the Baptist is yet to come. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight, verse number three, make straight the highway for the Lord. Make straight way in the desert, and every valley shall be exalted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every mountain and every hill shall be brought low. Yeah, yeah. In the crooked places shall be made straight. And the rough places shall be made smooth. Isaiah is saying the same words that a, a famous African American said years ago. He said it over 2,000 years ago. And Dr. King came back and recited it to us 50 some years ago. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see together. And the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We need to understand that some will not acknowledge Jesus Christ today. But Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 that there will come a day that every eye shall see him. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess. Yeah. He goes on to say, all is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, 
because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are all just grass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He comes to verse number 8 and he tells us in this one verse that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Yes, in his 28 years of preaching, my homiletics may not have been as sharp as I wanted to be. But the word of God should have been the same regardless of my presentation. For 28 years, I've stood before congregation, masses of people in several different countries, but the word of God ought to have been the same regardless of where I stood. I say to you today, say, first of all, everything going to be all right. Regardless of who's in office, regardless, regardless of the results of the impeachment trial, I'll stop by to tell you, if you're walking with the Lord, just keep holding on just a little while longer. You may get by, but you can't get away. I want to let you know that sooner or later the grass will wither. This word grass in the Hebrew means the the herb, it, it means the leek, the vegetables. The leek is L-E-E-K. The vegetables, the leafy seeds, the chives, the garlic, and the onion. All of this is considered grass, and because it lives for a limited amount of time, you need to understand that the grass is going to win. I had a privilege, I had a privilege of, you know, I, I try to think that my thumb can produce that which is green. So I kind of take kind of pride into stuff, uh, making it grow and making it happen when other folk can't make it happen. But there was a parcel of ground right by the house that no grass would grow in it, no trees would grow in it. So I decided to go out and get me some winter grass. And I put that winter grass there. And I decided if it can grow in the winter, it'll grow in the time. Little did I know. It was winter grass because it only grows in the winter. Sure. I planted it in the winter and I had a, 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 I mean, I had a great little patch there. It looked good. It sprang up. It got about that tall. The guy weeded it for me. It comes back down. And it was green and it was bright green. It looks good. But when the summertime came, it began to wither yeah. away. And when the other grass was brown, that patch was green. But when that patch was, was brown, the other grass was green. Yeah. God is telling us that regardless of what you do on planet Earth, only what you do for God Will last. Right. Yeah. What it really means to dry up, to dry out, and to dry away. It is the same word that means to be an embarrassment, to be confused, and to be disappointed. Sure. You just don't know what it does to a person who thinks they can make anything last, what it does to a person when it withers away. My psychic, Sister Urban, was messed up. My mind. Brother Irvin was shocked. My focus was all thrown off because I just knew that I had a patch of grass that was never growing anywhere in that particular area. I knew I had a patch of grass that I could brag about. But little did I knew that grass withered away. Let me just tell you, your life may be just like that grass. If you don't put it in Jesus, yeah, yeah. if you don't keep it in God, mm -hmm. it's going to wither away. Yeah, yeah. We put all our time into our children, but if we don't put God in them, right. it's going to wither away. Yeah, yeah. We put all our focus into our money, our spouse. We put all our focus into our girlfriend, our boyfriend. We put all our focus into our family members, and we love them for life, and we know that they're going to come up and do the right thing. 
You need to understand it doesn't matter what you do, but only what you put in them from God will last. Yeah, yeah. Says that the flower will fade away. Mm -hmm. This word flower means the blossom, the bloom, the bloom itself, the, the glitter and the glamour will fade away. Yeah. When it talks about the flower, you, you, can you picture the priest and the pope with the headpiece that goes on their head? There are some shining diamonds in there, and, and it's a very distinct crown because only a few people can wear it, but the Bible is saying that even that crown will fade away. Yeah, yeah. Paul talks about those who run in the Olympic Games, and he says when they, they run, they run to win only a bruised wreath, and that bruised wreath will fade away. It gives you bragging right just for a few weeks and then it begins to fade away. Yeah, yeah. I thank God that as I have a cross now, one of these days, I'm going to ride wear a crown and, and the crown that I will wear then will not fade away. So this word flower means that, that metal plate, that authority that the priest and the pope has today, it will soon fade away. I oftentimes say to preachers, don't get high on who you are. Yeah. Don't get so focused on your authority, Pastor. Don't get so tied up into what you can do and how you can speak because sooner or later it's going to fade away. Yeah. Yeah. The grass will wither. Mm -hmm. The flower will fade. Mm -hmm. This word fade means that it will fall away. Mm -hmm. It will fall down. And this word means that it will be a dishonor to all of our service. It will faint. It will sink away. It will dry up and it will dry down. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you do. If you don't do it for the Lord, yeah. it's out of here. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you shake like today. It doesn't matter how you work out. It doesn't matter what you eat. Because God is yet in control, and many times God is allowing us to go through some things so he can get the glory. You let him use you. Don't complain about what you're going through. Let him use you today so he can bless you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Jesus says, when you pray, go into your secret closet. Yeah. And after you have shut the door and, and you close off all the stuff that's outside, after you have shut the door, call on God in heaven, and the God who hears in secret will reward you openly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to understand that God is in control. Yes, yes, yes. He says the, the word. The word, word, this word, word is God's speech. Yeah. God's saying. God's utterance, God's decree, God's provision, and God's promises. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want a provision that will be there to the end, you need to get it from the Lord. Right. Yeah. I know she meant it well. I know he meant well that when he said that he will be there from now on, be there, and he will never leave you. But let me tell you, only God is the one that will be there from now on. Be, because first of all, we are poor, frail human beings and whatever we promise, we can't keep the promise because we are not in control. Yes, but the God we serve is in control and he will always keep his promise, he will always keep his saying, and he will always keep his utterance. Yeah, yeah. The good thing about God, he doesn't have to move, he can just speak and stuff yeah. happen. You remember, don't you, the Genesis text says that the earth was null and the earth was born and there was darkness upon the deep and God just spoke and light came skipping down through the universe. It's because of God and whatever he says he's going to do, he's going to keep his promise. We need to keep and hold to the word of God. If we're going to teach, we need to teach the word of God. I'm not talking about some, some canned good that you get off the internet. I'm talking, I'm not talking about when you hear other folks say it and you carry it from one tradition to the other. I'm talking about hearing a word from the Lord all on your own. You see, we are combined, combated every day with stuff and we can't hear from God. You need to go into your secret closet and if it's a closet at your house, a physical closet, sit in there until you hear from the Lord. 
We have to get past these prayers that says, Lord, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep and jump up and get in the bed. Let me tell you, when you talk to God, it's a dialogue and not a monologue. You ought to talk to him in order to hear from him. We ought to talk to him so he can speak to us. And he will speak to us through his word. Yeah. The reason why the local church is so needed is so suffering. Yes, sir. Is because we don't value the word of God. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You have people every day that say, I don't have time to get in the word. I don't have time to hear what God has to say. I don't have time to read this. Matter of fact, you can listen to the word. Yeah. You can you can let the word speak to you. You can you can hear the word, but you won't hear the word while you listen, listen to the messy session through confession. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You you gotta yes, listen. Sir. To God's word. And God's word is not always loud and not always barren. You remember the prophet runs into a cave and he sees a fire in the cave, but that wasn't God. He hears noise in the cave, but that's not God. God was in a still, small voice. God is trying to get your attention in a still, small voice. He's just trying to speak to you. Young men, young women always hear from the Lord. Always watch what God is saying and what God is doing because it's God's word that's going to last forever. God, Elohim, God, the ruler, God, the judge. We talked about God and Anani last week and today we're talking about God Elohim and God Elohim, he is the, the everlasting God, he's the mighty God, he's the true God, he's the supreme and the great God, he is God all by himself, he is God because he's just God, nobody elected him as God, he wasn't selected as God, no one made him God, he just is God because he's God. He's God. He's God. There's no explanation for him. We go to school. We get our degrees. We go to seminary. We hear everything that the professors have to say. Brother Johnson will come right back to the same pulpit to talk about the same God that woke us up, the same God that keeps us, the same God that judges us. We have all our degrees just to hear from the same God. Same God. So it's not in our degrees. Mm -hmm. It's not in our tradition. It's not in our, cu our culture. It's not in our customs. It's in God. Yeah, yeah. We need to look for him. The Bible says, search the scriptures, for in the scriptures there are life. There is life. We need to search the scripture because the scripture offers us life. Yeah, yeah. Well, Spend some time in the Word. Spend some time with God. Spend some time around God. Spend some time hearing from God. Because God has a lot to say. And it always amazes me how preachers can preach for 50, 60, and some of them have preached for 70 years, and they never change the script. It looked like if there's only enough word in here to preach just for a little while, right? But every time you sit down before God, he reveals other things and he blesses you in other ways and he speaks to you another way based on what you're going through today. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's right. The best person to minister to somebody that's going through is somebody who has gone through. But when you minister to somebody that has gone through, that is going through, you need to make sure you have the word with you, a word in you, because that word that God has put in you while you were going through is sufficient for the person that's going through today. It's in God's word. Same word. Isaiah says, the word of our God is the one that keeps us strong. The word of our supreme magistrate God. The word of the divine God. Let me tell you, you people walk around here, oh, I just heard a rhema word. Let me tell you, the word is consistent. The word of God, it, de it just doesn't speak to the apostles. It, it just doesn't speak to the prophets of the day. And you know what, what is really going on with apostles. They just needed a name. They just needed a title. They just needed something for them to be called to. Yeah, yeah. 
And when it comes to prophesying, you need to understand that the prophesying that we know today is not foretelling, it is foretelling. So we ought to foretell through the word of God. Yeah. 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 We ought to saturate our hearts and our minds in the word. He says, the word of our God, our God. will stand. We can stop right there and shout all day because yeah. her word didn't stand. Yeah. Folk walk the aisle and they pledge their lives to each other and a bunch of folk feed them all this food, spend all this money, and after they spend all that money and they have 80 to 60 people in their wedding and when they show up in the next year, that all is gone and they are full of bills, but at the end of the day they last two months, there's a problem with somebody's word. That's a problem with somebody's word. Because I heard that you pledged to the preacher, you pledged to the to the five thousand people, you and now you pledge to the whole world by way of internet, you pledged to for better and for worse and sickness and in poor until death do us part. What you just said was that I'm gonna keep you even if you break me. I'm going to keep you if we go into the poorhouse. I'm, I'm going to stand with you even until we don't have any more money. In other words, what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. And when we go down the street, if we go from riding in a Cadillac or, or riding in a BMW to riding in a Hoopty, it's all right with me because I want to be with nobody but you. Then in sickness and in health, I'll carry you. When you're broken down, I, I take care of you. When, when you can't make it on your own, I, I will bring you water before you even ask for it. I, I will put sad on your room because I'm going to keep my word. Folk have told you I'll be with you through thick and thin. And when the thick got thin, they got gone. Let me just tell you, God will always keep his word. There's a folk that's not here today. Oh, pastor, we're going to be full, packed full in just a few more months because I'm going to reach out to folk and they ain't even here. I am going to go and, and I'm going to be a blessing to the kingdom and, and I'm going to give financially and they haven't given. Sure. Every now and then, every now and then, at least once a quarter, I get an opportunity to look at the financial giving of the church and I, some of them I said, hallelujah, they kept the promise. The other ones I said, Lord, have mercy. I said, Lord, 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 have mercy. It's because people would rather lie to you on purpose than to tell you something they can keep. I'd rather you tell me, no, preacher, I ain't going to do it. I don't care what you say. I ain't going to be here. Matter of fact, let me tell you right now. I'm going to come six times a year if I can make it. I'd rather, I'd rather hear that. I'd rather, I'd rather you just tell the truth. I, I rather, and then the problem I have, I'm not even asking you for it. Mm. That's right. You just follow you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Catch me running out the door. Pull me back from my shirt tail. Pull my ankles and, and yeah. just come back preach and let me lie to you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I don't even ask for it. I'm going to do this thing, preacher. This year, if this year is the year of Jubilee, maybe I thought last year you said it was year of Jubilee. I thought you said the last year was year of Jubilee. And the year before that was the year of Jubilee. First, need, first of all, you got to get in here for 48, 49 years. Then you got to get in here for 50 years. Then you declare a year of Jubilee. Folks just hear other folks talking. Uh, uh, they just hear other folks talking every year. Oh, this is my year of Jubilee. At least Google Jubilee. You, you, you don't have to ask Webster anymore. You can Google it. And, I mean, they just talking. And when you hear a person talking like that, you say, they just talking. But the word of our God will stand. The word of our God will stand. This word stand, the word of our God will rise. The word of our God will arise. When you need it, it will arise. When, when you don't need it, it will show up. How many times you were on your way to depression and you remember the word of God and it gave you some pep in your yeah, step? Yeah. How many times when somebody walked out on you and just told you they were going to be there and the word of God made a way out of nowhere? Yeah, yeah. How many times have your family 
understand that you're on your own now. I'm sick and tired of you. But the word of God pulled you up and held you to it. It is the word of God that maintains us. It is the word of God that is proven. It will stand. It will fulfill. It will be successful. And it will hold us up. It will hold us up. It will hold us up. And in Isaiah chapter, chapter 6, Isaiah said, It was in the year that King Uzziah died that I also saw the Lord. And it said he saw him high and lifted up. This word high, this phrase high and lifted up, means that he was hoisted. And he was hoisted. He was lifted. This word in the original Hebrew means he was hoisted up. He was lifted up. My question to you today when we look at the New Testament, it says, I, if I be lifted up. Let me ask you a question. Are you hoisting Jesus? Jesus says, if you hoist him, if you lift him, if you grip him, if you show him off to the world, he will draw men unto you. He will draw them. He will. He will draw them. The word of God will stand. It, it, it will stand when you can't stand. I, I thank God that there have been a time where I couldn't pray, but I could remember the word. I, I, I remember going to a lady and she had she had problems going on within her physiology and she was she was laying in the bed, she couldn't speak, but the only thing she could do is say Jesus, and then then, then somebody walked in the room, the, the nurse asked her a question. And she couldn't talk to the nurse. She just kept saying Jesus. And, and, and she, her eyes were going blind. And she kept saying Jesus. And her head was hurting. She kept saying Jesus. And when the sun hit her eyes, she began to go off into a coma. But she said Jesus. And sooner than later, she got up from that bed. And Jesus, and he, she hoisted Jesus. She lifted him. And as she hoisted Jesus, Jesus made her way out of the way. It's only Jesus that can keep us. It's only Jesus that can bless us. We got to keep hoisting Jesus. We got to keep lifting him. We just got to keep, keep lifting him. The word horse, the word horses, it gives us a picture of a pulley. And the rope is around the pulley. Machines are put together to make work easier. And let me tell you, when you have a horse, you, it, it goes around a pulley. And sometimes it goes around a second pulley. And then a third pulley. And every pulley you add, it adds, it makes it four times the amount of time stronger. Let me just share with you today. If we get together and on one accord and we lift him together, we will be four times, eight times, sixteen times, thirty-two times stronger. We need to get together and lift up Jesus. We lift up the word. The Bible says the word will stand. And the word will stand all by itself. You don't, you don't need a gimmick for the word. You don't need a show for the word. You don't need to dance in order for the word to be seen. That's all right. That's between you and your God. But the word of God is ought to be what we are teaching. It ought to be what we are preaching. And it ought to be what we are living. It says it will stand. It says it will stand. And then it says, it will stand forever. Yeah. He says, he says, the grass withers. The flower fades. But the word, the speech of God, the saying of God, the utterance of God, the word of God will stand. God the magistrate, God the, the judge, God the mighty God, God the, the true God, the, God the supreme God. It will stand. His word will stand. It will stand, meaning that it will arise. It will maintain. It will not. And then he says, for how, how long is the yeah, yeah. His word means beyond vanishing. How long is forever? Be beyond the point where it will fade away. How long is forever? Beyond the point where it will wither away. How long is forever? It is perpetual, meaning that it goes on and on and on and on. And how long is forever? It is eternal. When you drive down the Natchez Trace in Mississippi, you will look over and it says it petrifies, petrified forests. It means that the trees in that forest have been in, been in existence for, for many, many hundreds of years. Yeah. It means that this petrified forest has trees in it that hundreds of years old and they don't look like they've been damaged at all. 
And it says that this petrified forest is a sightseeing picture for people to go through and look at. Uh, this petrified forest is a forest that got water running through it that no man has put water in it. This petrified forest got trees in it that sprouts come up out of there and there's no plumbing in it. Are you with me today? This petrified forest in Mississippi near the Natchez Trace, it is a petrified forest that all natural things are happening and no man has done it. I stopped by on my way to Rapture and let you know that no man did it, only God did it. God is the only thing that can make it testify. God is the only person who can make it last forever. I thank God for Jesus that I have salvation and I found it a few years ago because over 2,000 years ago my Lord and my God he made me petrified because I received him into my life. I am forever going to be with the Lord. How did he do it preacher? He took a tree I tell you. He marched up Calvary's hill. He died to take
And that word will keep us. Thank God for Jesus. Come on, thank God for who he is. The way he's already done. If you never received Jesus, you need to come today. Don't wait till Wednesday. Don't wait till next Sunday. You can't afford to. It's not promising any of us. Souls. Thank you so much. God bless you and God keep you.